Open my eyes, I slept through the day Slept through the day Feeling uneasy, I push it away Push it away Last night was fun, don't feel like today Feel like today Let's do it again, let's go on a date Cause tonight I'm gonna take you out and live the dream that we've been talking about So we can dine and spend a ball on hoes Let's forget that we broke I wanna celebrate and have some fun tonight I wanna show you all the lavish things in life So raise your toes for all the good so before I head inside, I did want to talk about something that is very top of mind, which is, of course, tech layoffs. Unfortunately, I do know a few people that got laid off recently, like very recently, like just a few days ago. And it just sucks. I feel like my morale is down, my productivity is down, and I know for a few other people that's true as well. And I've just been thinking a lot about my career and really what it means to be a software engineer today versus like... Just a few years ago, it was like such a huge culture shift. I felt like tech was like such a cool place to be. It was like really fun to work here. Really enjoyed just coming into work every single day. And I think I still enjoy my projects and I still enjoy the people I'm working with, but I feel like there's like this looming danger or like feeling of unease where I'm just like not really comfortable working, which is counterproductive because obviously I still want to keep my job. I don't really have anything smart to say, just wanted to kind of vent, I guess. I, I think it's kind of sad that if you look at my past few vlogs, like early in the year for the past few years, I was bringing up layoffs, I guess, because, you know, early in the year is kind of layoff season for a lot of tech companies. And, you know, this year's no difference. I know for some people, a job is just a job. And I've said that before, and I, I still think that's a valid answer. But I just feel so grateful that, you know, I actually really enjoyed my job and I'd be sad if my job ever changed. So I was talking to one of the people that got laid off recently and, you know, they're younger than me and they're like, they had so much wisdom about like, you know, I'm young, I have so much of my life to explore other opportunities and, you know, they're going to be fine. That's something that I can take away from, even though I still have a job that I can be grateful for what I have now, but also still be prepared for if that ever changes. Okay, that's my cue to go. Today is April 18, 2025. It has been 121 days since I last posted a video and 74 days since I returned to work at Google. In terms of my day-to-day, -day, I feel like the biggest change to my work has been struggling to focus and it's not just because of the recent tech layoffs but it's also because I went on leave and the reason why I went on leave was because my father passed away very suddenly and very unexpectedly so it's been a pretty rough past few months to say the least. Fortunately Google does have a very generous bereavement leave policy. I was able to take an entire month off of work to plan my dad's funeral and do all the things you have to do when someone passes away which is a lot if you if you don't know. And if I'm being honest, one month really wasn't enough and I probably should have taken more time off. I was just so busy with all the planning that I didn't really have time to grieve and process everything. And so now that I'm back at work, it's just been a hard adjustment because, you know, my dad died, but for everyone else, it's just business as usual. So I still have meetings and projects and deadlines, which makes sense, but you know, it's just been a hard adjustment regardless. But yeah, that's life, I guess. Nothing really goes to plan, but you have to try your best with what you've got. just getting outside of the office. I feel like I haven't really made the most out of working in the city because 99% of the time I come to the office for work and then I head home. To change that, I asked my coworkers if they wanted to play pickleball with me after lunch because I got this really cool pickleball swag set from Google like last year and I still haven't used it. It was all of our first time playing at this court at the East Cut Crossing and it was so much fun, so windy, but like the sun came out and it was just like a really good time. I should be the last to know. Falling days, 
I stand alone Show me where the ending goes Honest, honestly don't I should be the last to know Hello, Mona. I mistook you for a dream. The engine glows, and I guess you always seem to know. Hello, Mona. I push back the serious feeling. The end's unknown. To get back the life I used to know. Show me where the ending goes Honest, honestly don't I should be the last to know We're all in this, I stand alone Show me where the ending goes Honest, honestly don't I should be the last to okay. know Okay, so it's Sunday and I'm starting to put the vlog together and I'm starting to realize it's a very mixed emotions kind of vlog because on one hand I'm talking about layoffs and how it's like to return to work after my dad passed away and then on the other hand I'm like out playing pickleball with my coworkers and having fun and I guess it feels kind of weird but I think it's a really good representation of how my days have been like there definitely have been good times and there have been down times and I guess I just wanted to show both of that in today's vlog just because that's kind of how it's been. And as much as I strive for having work-life balance, it's like impossible right now because there are times when I'm at work and I'm just like sad about my dad. And I'm still grieving, of course. And then when I'm outside of work, I'm like thinking about layoffs and like how terrible that would be. I'm only on episode two of Severance, but I'm starting to see why he did it. This is my first vlog of 2025. It's already April. I can't believe it's been like over three months since I last posted a video and I'm so happy to be back and I couldn't have made today's vlog without the help from my friends over at Insta360 for sending me the Insta360 X4 which is their 8K 360 degree action camera. I've been using this camera for the past few months and it's been a great travel camera. Genuinely I think if I only had one camera to bring with me on my travels I would bring this camera because it's just so easy to use you just like pop it on a stick and leave it there or you can even just walk around with the stick which I honestly genuinely don't even care about looking silly anymore because the footage is so much worth it. And you get these really cool shots that you really wouldn't be able to do otherwise without a 360 camera. What I think is really cool about the X4 and all the Insta360 cameras in general are all the accessories that you can buy to really elevate your content and to make filming fun. My favorite accessory is the invisible selfie sticks because they are super versatile and this is the extended version so it goes really really long. Like probably can't even see the whole thing in the shot. And like the name suggests you won't be able to see the stick in the video because they edited it out during post-processing. I also have a dive case that allows me to film underwater and the footage is super clear and I don't have to worry about my camera getting wet. It was perfect for my trip to Maui because the ocean is so clear there and it was just like so fun to have. I also bought a javelin selfie stick which is really cool and as the name suggests you can fling it up in the air and you get this really cool effect. All right I gotta stop saying cool. <laughs> So I brought this camera with me on my trip to Japan and I used the motorcycle clamp to film my go-kart experience around Tokyo and that was a lot of fun. This was cool too. And then this right here is a mouth mount so you put it in your mouth and then you attach the camera so then you get this really cool first person point of view shot and this is how I got some of the pickleball footage. The Insta360 X4 is a very very cool camera. I really can't say cool enough in this video because I really do think it's a cool camera. It films in 8K so the quality is great. The downside to that is that the file sizes are huge but still worth it in my opinion. So editing the footage on my 2020 MacBook was fine but exporting it was kind of slow but now that I have the M4 MacBook Max it's like such a breeze both editing and exporting and I really love it. On that note if you want to win a new MacBook and a whole bunch of other Apple products do check out the giveaway I posted on my Instagram. That's it for me. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.